Hi class, welcome. It's the first week of 16 weeks. I look forward to exploring this time with you. I'm Dr. Teru. Um, my full name is Teruko Vila Mitsuhara. Um, you can just call me Dr. Teru, that's fine. Um, I received my PhD, as I had mentioned in my intro video, that was just you know, a short little video um, last year in anthropology and a focus in linguistic anthropology. And today we're going to dive into what that means. Like what is linguistic anthropology? Um, I believe this will be many of your, I guess, first time taking this type of class because it is the intro course, culture and communications, the intro course to the field of linguistic anthropology. We'll go more in detail over, you know, what is language and culture and like and going through a lot of those those words and terms on Thursday's class. This is really just going to be about the logistics of the course. So you can follow me here by downloading your syllabus, and I apologize, by the way, I had it accidentally hidden on the website. The syllabus was the only document that wasn't made visible, but it's now unhidden, and everybody should be able to go there, go to the website, and download it. And I can show you here right now for those who, I mean, if you're already looking at this video, then you probably have already discovered how to use the website. All right, but nonetheless, here we go. So here, you, when you get to your beach board, for those who don't know, you're gonna see the course home. It'll have, you know, my face with my, some of my garden right behind me. You're gonna scroll down. I mean, you can watch the video if you haven't already. You can scroll down, read whatever is there on the course homepage, but then you'll see um, at the website here where my mouse is, it'll have course home and then a next tab which it says content okay you're going to click the content tab of your particular section right now you will probably see this as section five but i'm also teaching section one and section three so obviously you know that changes all right when you go to the syllabus one it'll be the green one um you will click right underneath that and the syllabus is now unhidden and then you see that and then i want you to download that okay i want you to download that syllabus and then follow me along for the class. I'll be referring to certain tabs on this website and this is where I want you to go to do that. Those, when I say, you know, go to the tab on, on, on our website, that says like course virtual office or online class meetings or week one, week two. I mean, it's very, you know, quite clear on that level, but this is really where I'm referring you to, okay? All right, so let's get to the syllabus. You know, you can pause this video and then download it and then, you know, return back here. All right, so here we go. We have the syllabus. We are meeting Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's going to be mostly asynchronous for the first 10 weeks. Asynchronous means it's not going to be in time with that class in the sense that I will always post lectures, but they're not gonna be live lectures. You can, in theory, because it's not live, watch it whenever you want to, whenever it's convenient for you. I do highly encourage you though, for those who just like need to keep to schedule, keep to schedule. If you want to wake up at 8, for the people who have section 1, wake up at 8 in the classes from 8 to 9, 15, do that. If you've got work that starts at 10, like get your class time in, you know, when you've signed up for it. And it goes on for the other sections as well, the one at 12.30 and then the other one that's at 3.30. Um, you're going to need to stay enrolled in your particular section. The classes are full. And also we're going to have synchronous classes in weeks 1. We'll have one in week 4 and one in week 7 as well as from week 10 all the way through the end of the course, we'll be meeting in class during class time live on the on Thursdays to do in-class activities to help you along with your projects and we'll be working collaboratively. So then you have to stay in your section, okay? All right, but email me if there's something to do with enrollment that you're not quite sure of um, and you'd like to discuss that. And if I can't be of assistance, I can for sure refer you to someone who will be able to go through different policy and in other class switching issues if they arise for you. But all right, so class meetings were Tuesdays and Thursdays, and for the first 10 weeks, mostly, besides weeks four and week seven, the class lectures are all gonna be pre-recorded and they're all gonna be uploaded to the class website um, through a link and then they'll probably and that'll they'll take you out. I'm still figuring out what's gonna be the easiest way to make sure that the videos get to you in high quality and are easily accessible for everybody in class. So, you know stay tuned to that but anyway you will go to the website to figure out where the link either takes you out of the website or if the video is inside the website itself under that particular week all right then there's me hi dr tedu um my email is right there on the website please feel welcome to email me but i really highly encourage you to just refresh your memory and read the email policy before doing so so for example when i get to that section of the website like please just make of uh, the syllabus please make sure that you put the course 
um, title anthro 412 in the subject line because then when I look through my emails I get a lot of emails then I can at least like find out like what class this is and also your section please put your section in there so that I can find where you are again I'm teaching three sections so it's helpful to know like who I'm talking to and where to find your information okay I have office hours obviously virtually Office hour will be Tuesday, 5.30 to 6.30, Wednesdays, 8 to 9, and Thursday, again, 5.30 to 6.30. And if those, those, those times don't work for you, you can just reach me by email and we'll figure out an appointment that works for both of us. Um, for those office hours, even though those are going to be regularly scheduled office hours, please sign up for them on Appointly. Um, we're all at home, many of us are at home all day, but I'm not always like glued to my computer, right? So if I get up because I don't think I have somebody there and then you're, somebody is in the waiting room for the, you know, on Zoom, it's gonna be a little bit awkward and it's because if you didn't sign up, I don't actually think anybody's there waiting for me. So please go to Appointly and sign up so that I know to be at my computer attending to Zoom and that, you know, I can be present for you and we, and we don't waste your time. All right, you can go to the course virtual office on, on our website, that tab, and, and click there for the Zoom link, click there for the link again to Appointly, click there for just getting a refresher. If for some reason you don't have the syllabus in front of you, you can just look to see again what the office hour policies are. All right, okay, Whew, we got that out of, out of there. So here's the, the blurb for the class, welcome. All right, this course is going to provide an introduction to the study of how culture and communication are intertwined in everyday life. We're going to look at language with an anthropological lens. And we're gonna explore how people across different societies use language and interaction to understand, experience, and act in the world, and how language is used as a way for people to distinguish themselves from other people and communities. Because we're all located in the United States, in the sense, oh, maybe some of you are outside of that because we're not like, you know, having to be in Long Beach at the moment, but um, the class is located in Long Beach, it's located in California, located in the United States, and it's been a tumultuous year in this country for sure. We will be very United States focused in this class. We, I will have references to um, countries beyond, you know, countries and communities outside of the United States, but the content that you're going to be reading is really to help us dissect what's going on in this nation. I think it's a really a good opportunity to look at how culture and communication intersect to give us the different types of worlds and realities and societies that are all intermixed here and, and, and trying to work together or and sometimes not on certain topics and how we see things or don't see things uh, in the same eyes. Okay, so we're going to be really focused on the United States in many ways. We're going to uh, gain a lot of theoretical tools in linguistic anthropology that will help us all understand how to dissect and understand this world of crisis forced self-isolation and the associated increased media content and screen mediated interaction. Ooh, lots of words there. Okay, the basic idea here is that where a lot of us had to go with, you know, stay at home orders, all of us had to deal with stay at home orders and from March onwards in various communities, depending on what state you are in currently, they opened up at different times. Whatever it is, we're all dealing with having to be home, having to deal with sociality differently. How do we, you know, what is politeness when you're not, you know, you have a mask on and you can't smile at somebody, but now you've like, you know, over here where I'm at, people are like giving thumbs up when they mean like yes, because we don't, we're not able to smile. So like we have all of these different things that are evolving communicatively uh, to respond to our changed social situation. So we're gonna like look at a look at gesture, look at facial expression, look at you know different ways of what is politeness, greetings, leave takings. Leave takings mean like you know signing off, saying bye. And we're also not only going to be dealing with those types of um, that type of discussion for in person things, but of course online in these mediated experiences that we're having now, these increased mediated experiences. So we'll look at uh, studies that are online. We're going to be looking at um, computer debate, and computer ba computer mediated debates about hair care in African American online debate, African American women's online debates about hair. We'll be looking at um, World of Warcraft community building. We'll be looking at so that's a video game. We'll be looking at. Um, Oh my gosh, political speech, uh, how if you wanted to be somebody who is an analyst of political oratory, what are some ways that people have done that and, and dissect language from politics? 
from politicians and in politics online and what are different various ways of attending that. I'll bring a lot of research in through the lectures and you of course you're not being assigned to read all of those things. There's quite a few recommended readings and that's for those of you who would like to read more about whatever is touched upon in lecture. But uh, we're going to cover a wide array of topics and I'm going to have a focus on looking at online interactions as much as possible because you're going to have a project that is not a big scary project. Please don't get scared. It's a six or seven page final paper. It's really just like take some data, look at it with all the tools that we've been having in class, and then we'll work together on it for the for six weeks together. We'll be working on your papers. And so you'll be okay. No worries. I promise you. I've done this multiple times before. And I also taught this class with this type of thing in spring of 2020. And it worked out really well. So you're in safe hands. So we have a lot of things that we want to cover, a lot of things that we'll do together, and some of the core concepts that you'll learn that will help you if you decide to continue on in linguistic anthropology, but I also believe it will help you outside of linguistic anthropology. We'll be learning about uh, concepts like community, narrative, identity, greetings, leave taking, socialization, race, gender, multilingualism, indexicality, ideology, and we'll be looking at more, and we'll be looking at how, how we can use that language to help us better understand and articulate what's going on in our world. Um, yes, okay. And we'll be using all of that to help looking at, look at things online and offline as well. We're going to read works old and new and apply those understandings to connections between culture and communication uh, and communication and social media. I had a student last um, in spring, she talked about um, the shade room for those of you who follow the shade room on Instagram and she did an analysis about debates um, regarding whether or not uh, mask wearing and, and during the early part of the um, the stay at home orders. And it was an interesting, it was an interesting paper. I mean, I remember it. Okay, I've also had students talk about um, online dating and how dating has changed because of coronavirus. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that you can investigate and we'll have time to talk more about research projects. So please don't, don't think that you need to figure everything out right now or even soon. But that's just to give you an idea of what's to come. Assignments. So every week you're going to have a quiz. Now, some of you might be like, no, why? Okay, pause, breathe, take a moment. You'll also notice that there's no midterm and there's no final exam. So it's kind of a trade off. What this is really doing is you don't really have to cram for a midterm or cram for a final if every week, which it's supposed to keep help keep you accountable for reading and keeping on tasks, but things don't just feel like you're always rushing to um, cram for something, but that if you've just been keeping up every single week with your reading and watching lecture, then these quizzes are, are very easy. When I've done these quizzes in person, as I've, I've, always, I've always tried to keep quizzes like this, um, students do overwhelmingly well. It's a pretty easy 15% for most, I would say all, st all students, 99% uh, of the students do really, really well. Um, it's because you've just read it, you just had lecture on it, so then you can take it and the, the information is very fresh in your mind. And they're not difficult quizzes. The first week's quizzes, this week's quiz will be on the syllabus that you've watched this lecture and then you've watched Thursday's lecture and then you have time to take it and I'll get to that in a moment. All right, so you have weekly quizzes that'll be open up on Thursdays. You have also in-class activities and participation will be measured during live classes only. Obviously, I'm not there to see if you're watching these lectures or not and it's your own time, it's your class, it's your education. You know, you're gonna have to take claim of it and it, ha it, it has its level of import in your life depending on what you can do right now with your with your time so I'm not even you know checking on my website which I can do to see who's watching what I don't have the energy to police any of that you know but when we get into the in-class part I'm gonna need people to be able to break out in rooms and work together so I will need all of you present for the the times that we are synchronous and we are in class working together on your projects all right and that'll be worth 20% is your in-class activities and your participation then we have a theory paper, the first one called Beyond the Ivory Tower. That'll be due September 25th. You have a week to complete that. Um, and don't worry, again, it's, it's actually a very fun paper to write. It's not long. 
you have another theory paper, when you're more familiar with that format, you're going to do a very similar paper for October 20 and do October 23rd, so a month later. Um, and then November 13th, you'll have a project proposal that's due, that's worth 10%, and then you have an online ethnographic project, which is worth 30%, which will be due um, in finals week, December 18th. And mind you, for six continuous weeks, we're gonna be working together on your projects. I mean, this is this is an, this is ample time to do to do this type of work, and you'll see it. I will give you a hand a, a upload, um, a very very detailed. You see how detailed the syllabus is. You're gonna get a very very detailed uh, packet about what I'm expecting, as well as the rubric for how you will be evaluated for your project assignment, your six to seven page paper, and what I'm expecting and and how you how how you'll be graded for that. So really, as much detail as I can give you, I will give you. Right? I want you to succeed. I want you to succeed in this class. I want you to succeed in all the aspects of this class. So really don't worry. And then there's also an extra credit theory paper for those of you who feel a little bit nervous. No, should be no reason for it, but I always get asked about extra credit. So I was like, I'm gonna build this into the syllabus. So there will be an extra credit theory paper. It's optional meaning you do not need to do it, but if you feel you want to, I will have another paper that you can write and then you can go ahead and do that. I will grade it and then there you go. All right, so a little bit more sort of expansion on these things. Lectures and class attendance. As I've mentioned, you know, it's your education, right? It matters to you or it doesn't matter to you or it matters to you, but then you have other things going on right now and you can't really give your full self or even half of yourself right now. I understand it. I'm not going to be going in, as I mentioned, and policing whether you're watching or not. That's up to you. You have the quizzes to do. If you've done the readings, you probably could do fine without watching the lectures, right? You know, like, uh, or maybe it's easier to have me expound and expand on the readings and then synthesize some materials for you, which is what lecture is for. And then it you you know you fly through the quizzes like it's like like it's nothing, which is how I've designed it. But you know that that is so is life so you can only do what you can do so they're all going to be pre-recorded anytime that i have things to say i'm pre-recording it so it's available for you and you can watch it at your leisure i promise you though lectures they make your life easier so i really encourage you to watch them i put a lot of time into them the first half of the course will consist of two pre-recorded lectures per week with a focus of developing an understanding of the course content there's also going to be two live discussions in weeks four and week seven to go over theory paper assignments, which will be in green in the syllabus. And from week 10 onwards, we're going to begin working on your class projects. So there will be one pre-recorded lecture on Tuesdays and one live class on Thursdays dedicated to working together through Zoom on your projects. And while there, there will be in class assignments and that'll count towards your participation grade. And I will alert you via email of um, the format shift ahead of time so that nobody's caught off guard because by that point by week 10 you will have all gotten very used used to having pre-recorded lectures that you might not be surprised you'll be surprised that like now we have you know in class stuff to do so put that in your calendar so that you're not booking things to do you know go out with friends on thursday onwards for the weekend after week 10 it's like no 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 like that's when your like your, your participation grade starts to be counted so like i'm looking for you and i need to be able to find you right Right? in class. Okay, all readings that are required are required. There's a section that says recommended. Recommended doesn't mean required. Recommended is optional. So for all the required readings, um, it's highly encouraged that you and recommended that you read those readings before lecture, by, before watching lecture, so that you have the readings, you've got some of your questions, then you sit down to watch lecture, and then I'm clarifying things for you. If you're just watching lecture, you haven't done the readings, you're going to be a little lost because I'm creating lecture with the assumption that you've done your readings. I will be going over the general thesis and the core ideas, but there's there's nuance there that like you that I'm that you will probably it will be more beneficial to you if you will have read it first. And then any clarification stuff, of course, we have office hours, so you can come and say hi and ask me about what's up. Weekly quizzes, as is here, they'll be on Thursdays. They open up at 8 a.m. on Thursday and they close at 6 p.m. You'll have an hour to complete the quiz once you start it, um, but you'll probably finish it in five minutes. It's not 
they're not difficult quizzes. I don't design them to trick you. They're just testing your reading, testing that you're watching. Theory papers, you'll have two of them. Um, they're really fun to do, um, not trying to trick you at all. They're, I mean, nothing here is tricky, as you can see with the syllabus design. Very clear, lots of stuff laid out ahead of time. Um, they're 700 to 1200 word theory papers that will respond to a prompt that I will upload before it's, of course, before it's due. Um, the prompt could ask you to use readings from the class to discuss something in pop culture or the news, could ask you to talk to a friend and explain a concept and write about that process. Um, and it could be anything like that. The extra credit pa uh, theory paper will follow similar formats of what is written right here on the syllabus. When we move into like the second sort of like the second the shift of this quarter where we have the short on like pro online project proposal by that point you will have read an array of studies we will have gone through so many lectures together you will have a really good grasp about what is going on in your world and how to look at it through linguistic anthropological lens uh, through, through a linguistic anthropological lens we will also begin in week 10 talking about projects and then for a couple of weeks, then you're gonna have a pro, then you're gonna have, uh, we're gonna meet and I'll talk about the project proposal, which is your, you writing like a one to two, maybe three page. I have a one page of questions and then you just answer those questions. And then I look through it to make sure that your project is like, you know, on point. And then, um, and then I approve it and then, or I approve it with, you know, alterations to make sure that it's feasible in the time, that the, the thesis isn't too large. And then you can of course change it as we go on and in the course at that point. But this is just your general idea, like what type of um, online site are you gonna be looking at? Are you looking at Tinder? Do you wanna look at the Shade Room on Instagram? There's a particular Juno you know, Traveler's blog that you're interested in. Are you interested in how universities have been transitioning? online? Are you looking at how classes are different and formatted? Are you interested in how families are having like these movie nights now, or, you know, Netflix movie watch parties? Whatever it is that you want to write about and talk about that has to do with communication online, that's what you're going to propose. I'm going to look at its feasibility and some of the methods there and you'll already know how to do that by then and then you pr I approve it or I, I don't or I have like some suggestions to how to fix it. And then you go ahead and you do it and we meet every class every Thursday to work on that together. And then of course there's office hours for more you know, particular questions. And then you write your paper and then I, you know, then I grade it and then you do well in class. Yay. <laughs> All right. Okay. So that's, those are the requirements of class. There's some policies I have to go over. Um, you can read them, of course. I'm not gonna read all of this verbatim because you have the syllabus. I'm just gonna highlight some things. In terms of late assignments, so the theory, we only have, there's only a, a couple of assignments. There's theory paper one, there's theory paper two, there's a proposal, and then of course there's your final paper. In terms of lateness, these things need to be turned in on time unless um, you have a physical or mental health issue or a family emergency that you can document, of course, um, and, if, and you know, you can email me and we can talk through things or, you know, chat through things. If it's a longer case, please, like, set up an office hour and we can talk about things if you feel comfortable to. Um, but please tell me sooner rather than later if something's coming up. Please don't disappear for a month and then you know come in the you know first week of December and just be like okay I was gone all of semester because this thing happened I don't have a lot of room at that point to help you right we have there are certain channels that I have to communicate through in order to get accommodations set in place so if you keep me in the loop I can you know help you better if you you know, cut me and your other professors and teachers out, um, then we don't really know what to do. So if you're in a moment, in a, in a bind, or whatever it is, something's going on, rather, better, best to keep your instructor in, in the situation, rather than completely oblivious as to why you're not showing up to things. I hope that that makes sense, right? We were here, we're here to help you and support you in your process and in your life in the, in the, in the capacity of the class, right? And so we want to, want to be t working together rather than feeling like we're not on the same page at all. I didn't even know that there was a page to, to be on, right? So keep us, keep us informed, not just me, all of your teachers, if something's going on. 
All right, and of course you won't be penalized for that. It's just you, we have to know. But if we don't know, we're just going to be putting zero next to assignments, and then that's just in the, that's where we're at, right? So let's avoid that situation. Communication is key. It's a culture communication class. That was kind of cheesy, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with it. I'm gonna own it. All right. Okay. Academic integrity. Basically, just don't cheat, right? Please don't cheat. Uh, it's really uncomfortable. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, you should know that whenever I'm filming, like somehow my body knows that there's a camera on me and then I will sneeze. And I'll sneeze usually three times. So now that one's happened, two are going to come. Ugh, it's awful. I don't know why. My body's like allergic to being recorded, which is crazy because I also act and I do stand up and I do all these things. So whatever, my body just wants to sneeze. Here we go. Sorry. Okay, um, academic integrity, please don't cheat. Please don't do it. It's so uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable for me to find out that someone has plagiarized work in any of the assignments that are assigned. You know, I can, you'll upload it and it'll get, um, you know, we have a way to, to screen from Turnitin that the paper is, you know, your writing or it's someone else's writing. And it's just, it's just, it's uncomfortable. Write your own words. You know, you have a voice, you have a, a particular vantage point and perspective in the world, you know use that talk about that um please don't take other people's words it's so it's so uncomfortable and it's wrong right you have important things to say so you say them right in terms of citations what that means is that if you don't cite your sources that it appears as if you are you know the author of of the ideas and if that's not the case that's plagiarism right you're just like oh i didn't know how to cite it well there are links here to help you with that there's also a writing center that you can go to that can help you figure out how to cite your sources at the very least you know there's a format basically where you can click this link and it'll show you how to do it i've also all of the within the syllabus everything is properly sourced in the syllabus i'll have to update a couple ones because there's one reading that's missing from the um, from the syllabus, but basically it's all there for you. So there's no excuse not to be able to create a bibliography. Mm -hmm. I've made it really easy. Okay. Ac accommodations. And then please read the rest about CLCOLB resources and everything to do with the library and knowing how to cite things. Like, please, please click these links if you are questioning how to cite your sources and how not to cheat and how not to steal ideas. Okay. Accommodations. If you need any accommodation, please um, please inform me of that. Whether that be um, due to due to something that would help you and would fall under the lines of the Student Success Center and what could be there if you if you need any resources, extra resources or extra time for things, um, you know, please let me know. And if you don't feel comfortable talking to me for whatever reason, um, you know, go through the Student Success Center and you can, you know, email them or you can call them and then they will inform me to an extent. So, and then we can work together. But I you know I don't bite. Also, I'm really far away from you. So you know what I mean? Like you shouldn't be too scared. Just send me an email if you feel comfortable and let me know what's up. And then we can work together at finding a way to help you succeed. Okay, attendance and participation, you know, watch the lectures in length, come to the live lectures um, on the days that those are the live classes as is scheduled on the syllabus. And I will, of course, announce things in advance and give you repeat reminders so that you are aware of when we're in a meeting class in person, I mean, and do all of that while we're working together. People will be sharing unique perspectives and experiences. And we need to be able to create a nice, safe space so that people can talk to, to talk things through, think things through. If we can't think things through at university, if we can't be vulnerable in university, and if we can't let people know what we don't know and what we'd like to know in university, then where can we do it? So it should really be a space where, like, I, I'm going to... I'm gonna say something here. So like the word ignorant has such a negative connotation, not knowing something, you know, not being ignorant of X, Y, Z. All right, I don't know everything in the world. I know every single one of you doesn't know everything in the world. There's too much to know. So what we can work on is saying, huh, I didn't know that. I'd like to learn more. Or we can also ask a question, which is like, that doesn't apply to anything that I've ever known. Hmm. 
hmm. You have to end that with a hmm, okay? Like a question mark. Something that like, shows the inquisitive part of you, the, the, the university student that you are that wants to know more. So we need to be attending to experiences, attending to knowledge with curiosity and with an openness that allows us to be able to expand our horizons. So anthropology is really kind of, in terms of a gesture, it'd be like this. Right? We get narrowed down and looking at specifics, but really what our minds are doing are usually this. So in order to be able to expand, we're going to have to be open and being um, appreciative of the spaces that we have together to learn and value each other's opinions. Okay, and also keeping things confidential. No screenshotting discussions and then like blasting them on Twitter. No, 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 that will, you know, that's no longer a safe environment. People are going to have questions. They're going to say things that they didn't know. They're going to have maybe words that they didn't know, maybe formats that they didn't know. Um, you know, you might not know something. I might not know something. I really look forward to learning from you. I'm definitely not going to know something. I'm going to ask you, oh, that's interesting. I never thought about that before. But you, you're going to hear that from me, right, when, when we're in our live classes. And you're going to share with me what you're finding in your projects. That's what makes research so fun is that you're discovering and then I get to discover through you. Oh, I'm so excited. So, you know, let's keep an open mind when it comes to sharing things that we do know and things that we don't know. Okay? And if there's, if there's at any point people not being respectful of each other's um, space and opinions and not being able to even disagree perhaps in a respectful manner, um, I will address that in the moment. I'll probably also ask to, you know, to talk to you in office hours and see what's going on. And if it's persistent, if the, if the behavior isn't corrected, I, I reserve the right to dismiss that person from class. So we're gonna deal with each other with respect and kindness and, um, and openness. And, but that doesn't mean that I tolerate hate speech. I mean, they're very clear right now. So when we say all opinions matter, no, they don't. Not in this class. There are certain things that you can't say to, your prof to be professional in a workspace, and this is a workspace, right? Okay, if that's unclear, we can talk about that more. Please look here as well for counseling and psychological services. It's just a link that'll take you to a website that'll have much more to say about that. And the CARES teams and the um, um, and CARES is a, a space where you can look for interstudent concerns if you have something there. Um, I'm new to Long Beach, so I was at UCLA up until now. And so, you know, I'm still getting my, um, still, you know, figuring out how to swim in these new waters. And of course it's online, so I'm not on campus to actually visit these buildings and see where, you know, where you guys would be going for assistance. Um, so please, again, that's something that I don't know. And then if there's something that you would like to inform me about, you know, please do email policy. You guys so important. Please include, as I mentioned at the onset of this, please include Anthro 412 as well as your section. I should have written that here, as well as your section in the subject line. I'm going to say it again. Please include 41 Anthro 412 as well as your section. So 41201, 412 03, 41205, you know, hyphen 05 or whatever in the subject line or say section 3, section 1, section 5. Just let me know that this is from the class and then what section you're in. I get oodles and oodles and oodles of emails and it's really helpful to be able to at the end search for Anthro 412 and then get all of the emails and if and that helps me make sure that I don't miss your email if I don't get that email it's just gonna look like I got an email from somebody else I have so much going on in my life I have different emails and they kind of all filter in and I need to be able to keep things um you know clear when I need to okay if you don't receive an email back from me within 24 business hours just kindly resend your email maybe I you know got lost in the flurry and by business hours I mean business hours, right? If you send me something on a Friday and I don't get back to you on a Saturday, that's because that's like my family time, okay? I'm not checking my, I might look, but please don't bank on me checking my emails all day Saturday or all day Sunday. Like I'm trying to like keep my humanity and my sanity alive just as all, as all of you are. And so I have boundaries that I have set up, okay? Monday through Friday, I will get back to you within 24 hours of you sending that email. But on a weekend, like I'm gonna get back to you on a Monday. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, this is also good. With assignments, if something is due as is they, as they are, they're due on Fridays. If you send me something at like Thursday, 10 p.m., 
and the assignment is due Friday at five. I might be able to get to you Friday morning, might get to you Friday afternoon, but please do not expect that I'm gonna be answering like full length stuff like at your leisure at any point 24 hours before an assignment is due. Like we have an office hour on Thursday, we can set up appointments, but that takes you to schedule. There's only a couple few slots available for that particular one hour. Do that prep in advance, prepare yourselves in advance. These last minute things and last minute, like professor, please, like I need to know the, what, what does this concept mean? I'm not writing you a paragraph answer. You can go back to the lecture, you can go back to the readings, but if it's 24 hours right before an assignment is due, it's not fair. I got, it's not fair. It's not fair to your other students. I've got 120 of you. I can't be doing that 24 hours before an assignment. Give me some time. Give yourself some time. Start early on, that, on things. Okay. Then there's a section called flexibility. All right, during this time, right? It's a, it's an odd time. We're going to be more flexible with how we deal with the syllabus. Items on the syllabus might change. I'm not going to be adding things to you, but I might swap things out or I might delete something if it doesn't seem applicable anymore. Our world is changing so very fast. I want to keep things um, up to date, relevant for you. Okay, so there's going to be some flexibility to the syllabus and flexibility to how, to, uh, how class is organized. I'm going to, try, you know, move things around a little bit if it feels like it would be better for the class as a whole. Okay, grading policy. You can look at that chart yourself. It's very clear. Netiquette protocol. This, please read it. This is not just for this class. This is like in general. Please show professionalism and courtesy to Anybody you're talking to online, that includes me, it includes your fellow students, it includes any administrative person you're dealing with, it includes every single person. Everyone's stressed, just assume that. So be extra courteous in your writing. Um, use correct spelling and grammar. You'd be surprised if, if we're living in a world of increased mediation, like people are really, really attending to what they're presented here because we don't have the opportunity to meet you in person and really get to know you. So that's your presentation of self. That's your person right there. So use uh, use as correct spelling and grammar as you can in your in your writing. Be professional and courteous. Use a positive tone in your emails. Um, there's a link at the end that will give you um, some updates to that. I'm also going to upload a PDF about just generally how to write an email. If this if this is confusing a little bit, I will send. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm going to upload in the student resources tab. It's not there yet, but I will put it there. Um, you know how to write an email. Okay. Um, Follow the discussion board guidelines. Basically, it's just be, be kind and courteous. If you have questions in class, you can write that on the discussion board. Students, other your peers can also write there. I will look in and I will write responses back. Um, so, you know, use the discussion board, but just be, you know, courteous and, and, and kind. Um, well, thoughtful, I would say, is the best way to think of it. And be respectful of others' times, time, okay? Um, who should get that email? Uh, how long should that email be? Is this really an email or is this is like a, you know, something that should be talked over more in person? You know, emails are usually for succinct things, things that could be answered more, kind of quickly. So, you know, think about other people's time as well when you write them. All the readings are going to be on the website. You don't have any books to buy, as you probably know by now. The withdrawal policy for this class, like the withdrawal policy, I, um, I, this is like all policy language for me for here because um you know i i am still new to the, to the long beach system but as i understand it that in the first two weeks you guys can withdraw without permission from me and the course isn't going to appear on your transcript um and i don't give incompletes um because i don't know what's going on for like spring and how things are going so it's just a little bit this particular semester you know really attend to that link and click it if you need to withdraw at other points beyond the first two weeks about how to deal with it. I'm, I'm aware that you will need my permission for the last three weeks of instruction. So like week 14 or week, right, week, week 15, I believe. 14, 15, no. I don't know if finals week counts for that. Maybe not, but if not, at least like by, by week 12, week 13 perhaps. Think about what you're gonna do if you need to drop. I really hope not, but you know, life happens. And you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, writing center, highly recommended. No matter what institution I've been at, I promise you students who are utilizing assistance for your writing, really good. 
Ah, oh, weekly topics, you guys. I put little module, exp um, little, little ex explanations for every week. And so you can go there to see sort of the theme for the class for that week. But this is really, you know, I hope it's self-explanatory. I put all of the due dates in the weekly explanations for class. Um, I will, of course, email you and keep you up to date on what is due and when it's due and all that. Today we have the introduction to class. I hope that you've begun to read the Culture Blends book. I will address that in detail as well as the Laura Ahern book on Thursday's uploaded lecture. Then you'll have a, a quiz on the syllabus, this lecture, as well as Thursday's lecture. Just, you know, things that I've emphasized perhaps in this lecture might be on that quiz. I don't know, maybe about an email policy. You could probably expect that um, to be a question. You know, just making sure that you're re that we're really having the best communication as possible as well as get you used to the format of taking a quiz in this class and what that looks like. How do I ask questions? Really low stakes. Um, oh, and I didn't say that the lowest quiz score for the, um, for the entire semester will be dropped. So, you know, yay. Okay, let me get into language myths in week two, which is the sort of like, oh, I don't have an accent. Like I have no accents. Like, yes, you do. You do have an accent actually. And so we're gonna talk about that um, and standard language myths and looking at like language in the national order and what is that about. Um, then we get into language acquisition and socialization, which is about kids and then um, acquiring a first language and then being socialized into using that appropriately in context. And then how does language affect thought? We'll be that Thursday's class. And then professional vision is the case of, for the Rodney King case, which is very apt in terms of, has always been apt in terms of people who are, um, you know, murdered or beaten. In this case, Rodney King was not killed by the police, but he was beaten and that launched the LA riots, which none of you were probably alive for that, but some of your family members would have been if they lived in LA proper. So we're going to be going over uh, that in week four, and then we'll have a live class that Thursday to go over, you know, what we've talked about, but then also you know, some exercises, but to really talk about theory paper number one. And I hand that out to you, hand out meaning upload, <laughs> upload that, and then we'll talk about it. Then we jump into um, week five, which is the, the self, narrative structuring of the self. We get into just one day on language and politics, um, which you'll have an article written by me and Jan David Howe, who's my husband. He's also a linguistic anthropologist. And so that's an article that uh, it's a chapter in a book that's being published. I think it comes out in October. So I have to get the proper proofs and upload that one right now, today, or this week. Then uh, your theory paper will be due that Friday of week five. Then we have week six with language and emotion. Super cool week. Um, that one is discusses a woman who is like a deep one per person centered narrative ethnography on a woman named Meg. And you know, this dealing with emotion, socializing emotion and anxiety for somebody who has agoraphobia and then also with her children, how anxiety is then like passed generationally through talk. Okay, then we have, uh, we, we segue from panic on that level to language panic when people get really, you know, up in arms about language and how people talk and the police, how and what should be discussed in school and in what, in what type of language should be discussed in school. And this one we'll be talking about black language, the role of African American language, African American vernacular English, black language, and then what was it called in that particular debate, Ebonics, and we'll be going over language panics in week seven. And then we also have a live class on Thursday to discuss the next theory paper assignment. And okay, then we have week eight where we deal with structural racism versus the folk concept of racism. And we'll deal with the what's called in this book by Jane Hill, who was a linguistic anthropologist who passed away some years ago, the everyday language of white racism. So we'll be dealing with that, again, US context. Then that Thursday, we'll be dealing with media representations of, um, of, race, of racist language, looking at um, American Indian English, as well as looking at Spanish and, Sp and Spanglish on Thursday, that, that Thursday of week eight. And then I'll post the extra credit assignment that, at that time, and you have a month to finish it if you wish to do the extra credit assignment. Okay, week nine, we get into language socialization and literacy, uh, thinking about how the role of the school 
And when we talk about structural inequalities, this would be a really good class to, to pay attention to on the education form, the education lane of that. Then we talk more about language within schooling, because that's a good segue that Thursday. Then your theory paper will be due on that Friday. Oh, I feel like I'm kind of scaring you. I can feel your energy through the screen. Don't get scared. There's like a, only a few assignments that are due. There's really not that many and they're kind of low bar. There's just like little markers throughout the time. I felt that energy. You're not even watching yet and I can feel it through the screen. Oh no, but don't worry. Please don't worry. The class is actually really fun, really doable. You have one or two or three reading. You have like one reading sometimes a week. You have two readings sometimes a week. Sometimes you have three, but there is really it's manageable and they're fun. I really, really chose readings that are fun. I think they're fun. I think you'll like it. Then we get to racial socialization. So if race as you know, here's my little teaser for those who don't know, race isn't real. Like it's a biological fiction, but a social fact. So we have to deal with it. But like, how do we then create race? So we look at the role of race making in the family because we will have looked at it in, in, through institutions and in the media. And we will have also looked at it through education at that point. Now we're gonna look at the family on week 10. And then we're gonna have a live class on Thursday and then every Thursday from week 10 onwards, we're having a live class as we work on your research project and think about researching linguistic anthropology and how to develop those skills in, in a practical way for you. All right, then week 11, um, I will talk about my work with um, on utopia studies and world building studies and my husband will give his talk on language endangerment and then you guys can chat with us. Um, that week, November 5th. That'll be right after the election, so we'll see how we all feel about, you know, having a chat, but whatever. I'm gonna talk about world building and alternative worlds, and my husband will talk about language endangerment um, on week 11. Week 12 will be communities and um, online communities and also, you know, in-person communities, but I'm gonna have a focus on online communities because that's the type of research that you'll be doing week 12. Your project proposal will uh, be due that week as well. But again, we'll have been meeting every week, so you'll you'll know all this stuff and you'll be fine. Week 13 is kind of fun. It's the language, love, and technology. It's about, you know, people who are getting married and falling in love through writing love letters in Nepal and then um, switching back to the U.S. context, um, how people break up via email and via text message um, in the onset of the 21st century and then maybe some of you will be inspired to write about things going on in the tw in 2020 with regard to language love and technology. Week 14 and onwards will become sort of a very good focus on gender. So we'll be thinking about language and gender broadly, opposition and competition. Week 15 is the politics of no. People say that we will dissect the just say no campaign as well as looking at from a conversation analytic point of view, a term you'll, you'll get used to, as well as the linguistic anthropological point of view on week 15, during week 15. And then week 16 is TBD, catch up and review, prep, help you with your ethnographic projects. I've kind of left it as a, as a as a space that can be moved around should we need to. And then I also have readings that I can attend attend there if we're like all caught up. All right, that is the class. And then you have your paper due in finals week. So you have ample time to write, ample time to think about everything. So that's that. Okay, Whew. wow, lots to do. It's a long syllabus, but I just, I made it as long as possible, basically so that you have as many of your answers could be answered in that document as possible. So I hope that that's helpful. Um, the class is going to be fun. We'll move through slowly but surely these topics. And um, I can only I can only tell you that uh, at the end of these classes, students usually leave very glad that they took it because the world, especially in a space and time of chaos, um, it's a lot easier to have that analyst's hat on because you take a step back and you look at everything and you're able to kind of look at it with, with scientists' eyes rather than just being embroiled inside of something in the moment. And so I hope that this class can basically be offered in a sort of therapeutic way. And I hope that that is, uh, I hope that that's something that you look forward to because I do. All right. Uh, please send me an email uh, if you'd like to meet in office hours. Um, this week's a little bit difficult because I, I am juggling another job at the moment, but um, but I you know we'll make it work if you need time outside of the office hours. All right. 
take care everybody and um, I'll upload my next lecture by Thursday, start of, start of the day. So you'll have the next one as well. All right, bye everyone.